Hi, this is Larry London. Welcome to Border Crossings. And today we are joined by a not only a jazz music writer and composer, performer, a lyricist, but he's also a college professor who was on the show a number of years ago in 2011. We welcome back Mark Winkler. It's nice to have you, Mark. Thank you, Larry. Thank you for joining us. I, you know, are you at home in LA, I assume? I am at home, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where you do most of your writing and recording? Right here in this room, here's here's the piano and I have all my recording equipment. And mm -hmm. yeah, this is and, where I do it. And that makes the magic right where you are. Well, you've worked, I, I was looking with uh, quite a few different big name jazz artists, Diana Reeves, Liza Minnelli, Steve Terrell, Kenny Rankin, uh, a number of different people. Who would you yeah. like to collaborate with that you haven't yet collaborated with? And they can be dead or alive. Either way, dead or alive. Pick no, I'm making, I'm making a thing right now. Gregory Porter. I love Gregory Porter. Wonderful writer, uh, fabulous singer. And I'd, I'd love to write with him. And I'd also love to write with a wonderful keyboardist named Larry Goldings. I mm -hmm. haven't worked with him yet. I'd and one him. more. Dead or alive, one more. Dead or, oh, okay, I'm going to do Burt Bacharach. You know? oh, great. Oh, yeah. Who wouldn't want to work with Burt Bacharach? Oh, man, but, yeah. You know, you have uh, quite a collection of jazz albums you've just added to your collection, yeah. uh, you know, with the, the Rules Don't Apply. That's the latest mm -hmm. album that you've had. Yes. And uh, on the album, you talk a lot about getting older. In fact, yeah. the last two albums you've had, you've dealt with getting older. Yeah. And so why, why? What made you decide you wanted to write about aging? Well, you know, I think it's one of the, as we have seen in the presidential campaign so far, aging is like a real big topic. I, I think really age discrimination. And um, as a performer and being in show business, it's even worse. So, you know, I could have either tried to still be the young, you know, guy, you know, talking about that, or I could be really honest. I'm in my 70s. And wow, you don't yeah, look that. You look great. Thank you. I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel great, too. I'm lucky. So, mm -hmm. But the bottom line is I wanted to talk about songs from my experience. And, um, you know, most songs in the Great American Songbook are, book are written by young men and women. Mm -hmm. You know, falling in love, falling out of love, everything's very tumultuous. And I really love writing songs from a from an older person's viewpoint, mm. uh, you know, so that's why I did it. And I, and I, and I found out that the more honest I am with my audience, the more they like it. I have gotten more popular now. You know, I make no bones about being in my seventies. I make no bones about being gay. I make no bones about not being the greatest scat singer in the world. Kurt Elling's great, but I write really good lyrics mm. and I, I, I try to lead with who I am and what I do well. And what do you do, yeah. Mark Winkler, when you're on stage performing and maybe, not that it happens often or if yeah. ever at all, you forget the lyrics to your oh, own song? Man. What happens? I make them up. <laughs> I'm a lyricist. You're a so lyricist. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I can come up with a good rhyme. Right. So for you, the lyrics come before the melody. Is that your process normally? No. My process, as I tell my students, is... I sometimes come up with a lyric first and give it to the melody writer. I, the melody writer sometimes gives me the melody and I put lyrics to it. And we sometimes get in a room together and I have an idea for a song and we write the song together. I like to do it all different ways. It, it must be a, you know, an interesting class at UCLA, a very yeah. famous prestigious university Thanks. here in Los Angeles uh, to teach lyric writing. So yeah. what, what would be uh, elements or ingredients that are necessary to be successful as a lyricist? Well, you know, surprisingly, I started lyric writing teaching 20 years ago, and I didn't realize how important form was in terms of writing a song, that just knowing what form you're in, there's two major forms. There's verse chorus, which is the more modern form. And then there was the AABA form, which was in the Great American Songbook. And it's not as popular now. But here's a nice little fact. There wasn't a hit song in the AABA form for about 15 years in pop music until Billie Eilish came along and wrote the song uh, from the Barbie movie. Um, that is an AABA and it's a big hit. And it's I love it. I love that there's an AABA song out there that's a big hit. 
So I tell my students, knowing what each section of the form must accomplish is a real big thing in songwriting. Mm -hmm. And I assume the AABA formula are music notes so that our international audience understand AABA? So it's like, you know, uh, fly me to the moon and let me play amongst us. Right. That's the A. Mm. And, it's, and then there's a B section, you know. But um, in a verse chorus, your title is placed in the chorus. In the AABA, it's in the first line and the last line of the A. Mm. I saw a video recently. It was like a guitar video on TikTok where they said there was only four, basically four chords in rock music. And and they they played those four chords and then sang the songs of each of those, you know, and it was amazing how it worked out. So, yeah, well, you know, Ed Sheeran did that when he won his case. He's, you know, they said that a, the song had the same chords as, as a Marvin Gaye song. Mm -hmm. And he played like 102 songs with the same chords. He did wow. like Wow, wow, wow. Well, that'll, that'll make the case for sure. I'll tell you yeah. that. I love songwriting. I'm, you know, I'm a songwriting nut. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Mark Winkler is our guest uh, talking about his brand new album, which is The Rules Don't Apply. Right. If you don't mind doing a song for us off the album, we'd like to no, hear something. Can I, can I introduce it? It's, it's the title song, The Rules Don't Apply, and it's written by my favorite lyricist of this, of this era, uh, Lorraine Feather fantastic lyricist and she wrote it with Eddie Arkin who's a wonderful melody writer but the thing that I love about this song is the story of the song it's basically somebody talking to a friend and saying am I too old to realize my dreams now because I'm at a certain age and the friend thinks about it and says no the rules don't apply to you so I thought that was a really lovely thing to say and that's why I did the song all right, Mark Winkler, the rules don't apply on border crossings. The rules don't apply to you He said it very simply and quietly too But as if there wasn't any doubt at all that he knew He gave me a gift I would treasure Said the rules don't apply to you In the shows on TV And in anthems passionately sung There's a message that you've got To keep believing in yourself But they generally mean If you're young If you're young Is it written in the air? As it seems to be That we haven't long at all To find our destiny I'll always remember To be grateful That the rules don't apply to me The rules don't apply to me on TV and in anthems passionately sung 
There's a message that you've got to be believing in yourself But they generally mean if you're young Ah, you say you're feeling broken So terribly blue Cause it's far too late to do What you dreamed you would do But I'll tell you a secret And I swear to God it's true See the rules Don't apply to you I wouldn't lie The rules don't apply The rules don't apply To you Crossings, Mark Winkler is our guest. We were listening to the title track to the new album, The Rules Don't Apply. And uh, looking back at the last 10 years of your life, uh, you have suffered some tragic loss. And, and I know your mother, you know, our condolences to you passed away not too long ago. Yes. And my brother, uh, too. And your brother. So that's, you know, at yeah. aging, that's one of the harder parts of aging, I would assume, is watching yeah, your friends and your family go. It is, but you know, uh, I lost my husband um, eight years ago, Mar uh, this March 5th. And uh, he actually came to the studio with me uh, when we did the last show, Larry. And uh, he was an incredible guy. And uh, when he passed away eight years ago, it was very tough. But you know, we were together 35 years. And the wonderful thing about looking at the totality of your life is I realized how fortunate I was to have him for 35 years. And the same thing with my mother. I had the greatest stepmother in the world. Hmm. For, I had her for 40 years. Wow. So um, yeah, you can grieve about it. I, I wish they were with me now, but I so appreciate uh, the lessons I've learned from both of them. Mm -hmm. my, my stepmom knew how to live life better than anybody. She mm -hmm. was just fantastic. Do you like dating in her 90s. Old school jazz or new jazz? I mean, are you uh, from the uh, Duke Ellington and uh, Ella Fitzgerald era, or are you more in Michael Bublé and, and you know, the later jazz? I like it all. I, okay. I love New Orleans jazz. I love uh, old school jazz, Louis Armstrong. I love Dixieland. But I also love uh, the new the new jazz. I love I love Kurt Elling. I love in this, Mark Murphy was one of my favorites, Al Jarreau. I love music. There's practically nothing I don't like. And I, I never try to write a song, even though I'm writing in the tradition of jazz and I'm using the vocabulary of jazz, I write it from the perspective of somebody living today. I don't try to write it like it's a song in the 40s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, you know, the 40s gave us some greats. Oh, yeah. The 40s and 50s, Frank Sinatra and, you know, uh -huh. all, all of those uh, singers. And uh, back in that day, everybody wore a tuxedo when they performed. They showed respect to the music, to the art. Today, yeah. you don't see tuxedos anymore by... Uh, no, but most... jazz guys dress up. Oh, they do. They really do. That's that's one difference. Uh, you know, you're, you're Wynton Marcellus, Branford, you know, Kurt Elling. Uh, they, they, they put on... They look pretty dapper most of the time. And I wear a suit. I don't wear a tie anymore. I stopped wearing a tie but I do wear a suit. I had a song in one of my musicals, I also write musicals, and it was called When 50 Wore a Tux. And it was about when I was a kid, I thought when you got older, you dressed up. That was just the thing. And I was very uh, upset that when I grew up, uh, all the guys wanted to look like their kids, you know? Right. <laughs> dress young, everybody wants to dress yeah. young, but you know, just, it's amazing how things have changed and evolved and. Uh, the business has totally evolved. It's no longer like it oh used to God. be when you started, where, you know, you could do things raw and the actual 
in the studio rough and raw and put it on tape and make a, you know, let's go with the first cut. Now it's multi-track mixing and everybody can do it by email. Yeah, we do. I just did a duet uh, and the guy was in New York and I was in LA and that's coming out uh, in a couple of months. Hmm. Uh, I took, I took a song on uh, rules don't apply and I did an alternate version. I did a duet. I put a guy, a wonderful singer named David Bassey on, on the song with me. And, you know, that's what you can do now in the era of streaming is you can have alternate versions of songs. And that's kind of neat. I, I like it. Is David Bassey related to Shirley Bassey? Not at all. Not at all. Okay. He Had to ask. It. Yeah, no, it's true. Well, I'm not related to Henry Winkler either. <laughs> we have something in common. Okay. Yeah. Mark uh, Winkler but, is our yeah. guest. Um, we're talking with Mark about new music, uh, also the pain of loss and loved ones, and yeah. the fact that you have... Uh, added songs about your age and about aging to to uh, some of your albums, your last couple of albums. What's what, been the it, highlight for you so far? Well, the highlight happened this week. I'm number six on the jazz charts. Congratulations. And here I am, 74 years old, and I reached number six, never got even near to that. The last couple of years, my albums have been doing better. Um, uh, and uh, yesterday, number six, Three weeks on the charts, unbelievable, you know. So, uh, it to me, it's like really rewarding. It makes me, it makes me think that what I'm doing is is, is I'm doing the right thing. So right. Now, you had mentioned about composing musicals. How many have you composed? And, Six. and where where are they playing in Broadway or where? where One is playing off Broadway. It's been playing off Broadway for twenty four years. It's called and Naked Boys Singing. They are naked, they're boys and they're singing, but it's a very sweet show. They are <laughs> naked, but it's it's sort of like sweet. But uh, they're but naked. Okay. But they're naked. And believe me, it gets an audience, you know? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. But I also wrote a musical about getting older called Too Old for the Chorus, but not too old to be a star, uh, which was played all over the country. And then I wrote a musical about jazz in the 50s called Play It Cool. Uh, and... Uh, I love writing musicals. I want to get back to that. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I wanted to say about uh, writing about getting older is on this new album, I write about Capitol Records, my dream of singing with Capitol Records and having the greats sort of in the room with me, the spirits of the greats. And that can only be written by a guy who knows who Frank Sinatra and Keely Smith and Louis Prima were and Nat King Cole. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also write a song about getting older and getting wiser and knowing when somebody is terrible immediately and when somebody is right for me immediately. Hmm. So and I, I, you yeah. know, I used to live in Los Angeles. So I remember going by on my way to work, the Capitol Records building, the big white tower. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it still stands, if it's still it's standing, it's doing really well, actually. That's great. Cause it was a landmark. And that was a number of years ago that I worked for Dick Clark in, uh, in Hollywood, but, uh, and I would drive oh. down sunset and, you know, but um, we've got Mark Winkler with us, yes. and Mark Winkler is quite an accomplished musician, composer, lyricist, and have you thought about composing for a film? Is that something that interests you? I would love to do that. I have had a couple of my songs in movies, terrible movies. <laughs> uh, good I, songs, terrible movies. It was a good song, <laughs> yes. but it was, a, it was this movie that was, where it was made right after Pulp Fiction. You know, there was a whole series of movies that were like Pulp Fiction, like ripoffs. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> and I went to the screening and I was stuck in the middle of the row and the movie starts and the guy's being murdered and my song is playing. <laughs> then he dies, my song is over and I'm stuck in the middle of the row for the rest of the movie. Oh, you wow. Know, wow. It wow, came wow. out on uh, video in mm. Thailand or something. <laughs> So, Mark Winkler, will you do another song for us? Sure. It, uh, the The next song is, uh, well, let's let's do uh, Sunday in L.A. You know, uh, the nicest thing in L.A. is Sundays because the traffic is better. So mm -hmm. I, I decided to write a song about uh, L.A. and I wrote it with a wonderful uh, composer named Greg Gordon Smith. All right, Sunday in L.A. and Mark Winkler on Border Crossings.
What a day, what a lovely view in your arms. Sleepy afternoon, we can play nothing better. Palm trees, perfect weather. The only time to drive, 10 and 405. The week ahead, so far away. Sunday in LA. There's a reggae band and the tastiest taco stand. Children dance to Marley. We can ride us on their Harley. Clattered by the dusk, our lips begin to touch like high school kids on summer break. Sunday in LA. Everybody loves a Sunday in LA. Everybody loves a Sunday in LA. Of that native weed, like a sweet elixir drifting somewhere in the distance. To each his own, I say, as we toast a perfect day with a two buck Chardonnay. Sunday in LA. Everybody loves a Sunday in LA. Everybody loves a Sunday in LA. Everybody loves a Sunday. Everybody loves a Sunday. Everybody loves a Sunday in LA. Everybody loves a Sunday in LA. Border Crossings, Mark Winkler, Sunday in L.A. Yes. I used to enjoy living in L.A. Great city. Well, you know, my favorite city, although it's gone through, you got, you have gone through, you know, fires. You've gone through the floods. Yes. The, the mudslides. You've gone through all that stuff in the last, earthquakes in the last couple of years. Yeah, but you know, L.A. gets a bad rep. It's, it's really wonderful. I love the culture of L.A. You know, there's music playing every night. There's plays. There's art, our art museum is great. We're getting a new art museum in two years or a year and a half. Uh, I love LA. I'm an LA native. I love the whole tradition. I love the movie industry, mm -hmm. uh, film noir, you know, which is really sort of LA centric. Right. So I'm a big fan of LA. And a lot of people, they like LA and don't like New York, or they like New York and don't like LA because they are polar opposites. The, you know, this pace is different. The lifestyles oh, yeah, are different. Yeah. So uh, you're an yeah. LA boy. I'm an LA boy, but I love New York. Oh. You know, um, my husband was from New York, and my my new boyfriend. I'm not new; six years. So I was lucky enough to find another wonderful person, uh, and I wrote a song about it on my last album, Late Bloom and Jazz Man, which is a beautiful song called "In Another Way." Mm -hmm. That you know, Richard died, but I found love again in another way. You know, you mm -hmm. can't expect to have this. He's not anything like Richard, except he's Italian and he um, came from New York mm. and he loves and, the arts. So yeah, do you deal with your sexuality in your songwriting and your composing? Uh, not, a, not a lot, but I did write a really cool song about Truman Capote, mm. which it's called Sissies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really like that song. 
Maybe I, I, get it in the movie uh, that they just did about Truman Capote. Yeah, I'm I'm watching it. I'm a very big Truman Capote fan. He's a mm -hmm. fantastic writer. Uh, but I would like to actually write more about it. And I actually wrote a new song about it, which hopefully will be on the next record. And I did it with a wonderful composer named Spencer Day. Mm -hmm. And we're writing a song. And it's definitely gay. Mm. And when is the next uh, record coming out? I mean, you just next released year. one. How next many? Year. How many albums? 21? I don't know how 21. many albums. 21. A lot. A lot of albums. And I, I did my last nine albums with this wonderful producer, Barbara Brighton. Mm -hmm. And um, we're a good team. We're sort of like they could do a mini series on us because we fight and then we reconcile. And I think I'm never going to work with her again. And then I realized at the end of it that she was right. I mean it. Every album I fight with her, and then I realized everything she told me was right. Hmm. But, uh, it's a good, it's a good uh, dynamic. And the album's called, or the you're one, thinking about the, the new. Oh, album? I don't know. The you haven't thought of a name yet. No, 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 no. I no, you don't have like three choices, or you know, no. Really? I have a lot of songs for the uh -huh. next. Record, oh, but that's great. I, I yeah, I don't, I don't know what the next record's called. Just call but it a lot of songs. A lot of songs. A lot of songs for Mark. I write Rickman. songs. That's what I do. I'm a songwriter. You know, people say, God, you write a lot of songs. And I go, but I'm a songwriter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really lucky. There's a wonderful singer in London right now, Claire Martin. And she's just recorded two of my new songs. So I'm real excited about mm -hmm. that. I'd love people to record my songs. I want to write with Jeffrey of uh, Gregory Porter. Mm -hmm. And I want, uh, I want more people to do my tunes. You know? mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, as a songwriter... Uh, do you think you could write a pop song if you were asked yes. to do so? You could. Yes, I could. I like pop music. I'm a real, I know this sounds like so, I'm a gigantic fan of Taylor Swift. Oh. I'm like so amazed. Join the club. Thank you. I'm, I, I'm so amazed. I love her lyric writing. You know, I think she's an okay singer. Good. She's getting better. I think her melodies are good, but her lyrics are sensational. And she follows the craft of songwriting. So thank heavens I have her as an example to teach my students. Because mm -hmm. there's some bad, there's some bad lyrics out there. Oh yes, oh yes, some nasty, oh, yeah, uh, lyrics that don't make sense and whatnot. Yeah. Anger, there's a lot of angry songs. I don't know. Yeah, but, but you know, there, as long as there's people like Jason Isbell, I love mm -hmm. him. Uh, mm -hmm. I like uh, uh, you know Bruno Mars, Ed Sheeran, uh, you know uh, Gregory Porter. Once again, he writes his own lyrics. Mm -hmm. There's there's some good stuff. Okay. And there, there's a new jazz musician. Well, he's not new, but uh, he he left the uh, Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Oh, to, I love him. Yeah, and and he John just Baptiste. Yes, I love John his Baptiste. new album. It's great. I'd yes. like to write with him. There I, you go. I think we'd have fun. Now let me I ask you this: Orleans stuff, you know. Sometimes. Mark Winkler, I want to ask you, what yeah. would your dream band be if you could assemble any musicians you wanted together for a band? Your all-star dream band would be. Alive or dead? Can be both. Okay. Piano player McCoy Tyner, my favorite piano player. Um, oh, this is hard. I, um, it would definitely be the piano player would be McCoy Tyner. All right. Uh, Ron Carter, I guess, on bass. Um, drummer. What's it? I'm th I, 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 he sang too and he played with Carmen I can't remember his name but he was great mm -hmm. and uh, sax well My My Miles Davis why not go for it go for it wow yeah. Mark Winkler is our guest yeah. here on Border Crossings chatting about his new album which is The Rules Don't Apply and yeah. I assume you're on tour or going on tour well I'm going to be doing New York mm -hmm. in May and I'm going to London in July 9th, I'm going to be singing at uh, Pizza Express, and then I'm singing at LA twice. So I'm um, now that I'm number six on the jazz charts, I can book more gigs. That's, That's right. Good news, yeah. Now, do you do any international touring or a lot of aside from London? No, I have. I performed in other places. Uh, I've been in Japan, mm -hmm. but no, I would like to do more touring, and uh, I love performing live. Mm -hmm. It's something I've learned to do and learned to like. And that's a whole separate skill set, mm -hmm. performing live than recording in the studio. Yes. And Japan, they love jazz. I lived there for a couple of years. Oh, they, cool. they love jazz music. Um, they love all kinds of music. There's an appreciation, a different kind of appreciation than 
you know, maybe here in the United States. Um, but we're talking with Mark Winkler here on Border Crossings. So I did want to ask, um, jazz music. Yes. Seems to be, I don't, I wouldn't use the word fading or, you know, it, it just, it's That's uh, the word they usually say is jazz dead. Yeah. I, I don't like to say that, but I don't like to say it either. You know, it seems like, you know, a lot of jazz radio stations are going off the air because they're just not making revenue. And, uh, it's, it's a harder sell. You know, mm -hmm. um, with with Taylor Swift being at the top of the charts like she is, yeah. and all the attention she's getting, how do you feel about that? That that notion that jazz is kind of dissipating. Well, I look at it this way: um, there's people out there doing jazz that are selling out their concerts. You know, Samara Joy, you know, came out last year. Mm -hmm. She's you know she won Best New Artist, she won Best Jazz Vocal. Uh, she sells out. I mean, and she's sort of a throwback to old school Sarah Vaughan kind of singing. And people love her. And at the same time, um, you know, they love, uh, uh, I always get her name, uh, Swift, Veronica Swift, who's mm -hmm. a little bit more edgy and more of today. And mm -hmm. she's doing great. Gregory Porter's doing great. Uh, Jamie Cullum is doing great. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of jazz singers that are doing just fine. And, you know, there's a whole thing. I think the millennials are discovering jazz because there's a club in L.A. called. Uh, uh, that's one thing about getting older. I forget names. Yeah, the names come a little slow. Oh, man. They come slow. <laughs> I mean, there's a club in L.A. A club in L.A. Haters to like, you know, that mm -hmm. crowd, a younger crowd. Mm. Wow. So, and you have uh, you've played some of the biggest clubs. You played the Blue Note. Yeah. Uh, which you know, is a, is a well-respected jazz club. I think everybody, B.B. King, you name it, go down the list. Everybody's played at the Blue Note. It was fantastic. I love playing the Blue Note. I played at Birdland a couple of times. Wow. I played at uh, Iridium. I've played, you know, it's it's been good. I, uh, New York is great. Mm -hmm. I love so it. When, yeah. when you do a music festival um, yeah. versus a smaller, intimate club, do you have a preference on the audience? Does the audience seem more engaged in a smaller intimate setting than yes. they are in the 50,000 people festival? Yes. You can't do so many ballads when you're doing a festival with 50,000 people. Mm. You've got to really, uh, you've got to do a lot of up-tempo songs with energy. Right. That's what I, and I, I have a lot of up-tempo songs with energy, so it's fine for me. But um, you, that's one of the things you've got to do. And you've got to be broader, larger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without and, being phony about it and having done this as long as you have yes. uh 21 albums and all the many years that you've put out i can't believe it by the way Larry. it, it, it sounds it. unreal i mean you know it's kind of like you have to pinch yourself and say we're you know this time must have flown by so fast it did, it did. yeah and, and you do you remember willis conover that's a name from the voice of america and he was a host on the voice of america a long time ago mm -hmm. he played jazz music for people in Russia when they had never heard jazz music before. Wow. And that's what he did here. They, they used to have a trophy case with his you know, photos with Louis Armstrong and whatever um, in honor or memory of, of Willis Conover. But I didn't know if you knew who he was. No, no, you know, I do. I did know who he was, but I never communicated with him. So. Mm. Okay. Well, that's would you communicate, I, communicate with our audience now and do another song for us? Sure. I'd love to, uh, you know, this song is sort of in the tradition of Cy Coleman, which means it's a very sophisticated, this is called a laundry list song. And a laundry list song is a list of things ending in the title. And I love laundry list songs. So I wish you love is a laundry list song. And one of my favorite ones is Rhode Island is famous for you. Do you know this song, Larry? No, I don't. I'm not familiar oh, with it. It's great. It's a great, it's written by uh, Dietz and Schwartz, hmm. you know, who wrote Singing in the Rain. Uh, so it's a laundry list song, but basically it's in the style of Cy Coleman because I thought he was the coolest piano player I ever saw. And I imagine that I'm on Playboy After Dark and there's three bunnies behind me uh, uh, snapping their fingers on one and three while I'm singing this. <laughs> and it's called? In Love in New York. In Love in New York. Mark Winkler here on Border Crossings. I met you, and nothing is the same. I barely know my name, and 
And all that I can blame it on is love Suddenly Manhattan is batting a thousand or so Tell me where did the big bad city go? Cabs are stopping for me on the street My shirt's not clinging in the summer heat Even the trash on the sidewalk sweet I must be in love in New York The tallest skyscrapers don't block the sky Downtown subways of pleasant ride Broadway tickets on price too high I must be in love in New York In your arm The Hudson looks much bluer And New York feels much newer This year in the park, the tavern looks much greener And each diner that is seen here Is in love, that's clear Times Square traffic is moving so fast the daily news is not too low class And even Long Island's a total blast I must be in love in New York to say hello and I'm sure this winter there won't be snow I must be in love I'll take Manhattan I must be in love Cupid caught me napping I must be in love Get me in love in New York, in New York. Do -do 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 -do. Love in New York, Mark Winkler, who's our guest today here on Border Crossings. And you said it's the laundry list. It's like the laundry list. Yeah. How about, have you written, because you write about your age, the bucket list? Yeah. It's a different list. Wow. You know, I should do that. I think you gave me an idea for a song. Ooh, I'm feeling good. 
Yeah. I want, I want royalties. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you royalties. <laughs> Mark I mean, Winkler, uh, what a pleasure it is to have you on the show. And I know that, you yeah. know, your your new album, The Rules Don't Apply, is doing very well. Number six already on the jazz charts. And, Amazing. And, you know, who and knows? number one on um, Amazon. And number uh, one on Amazon. Vocals. Congratulations and to I'm you. I'm old, That's... you know, I'm old as dirt. And, You're old uh, as dirt. <laughs> so what I basically want to say is anybody out there, you know, uh, who has a dream, you can do it, you know. And I want to say the rules don't apply. Oh, can I get can I get political on on this? Well, we can get political to a degree, but you know. Okay, I mean, I'm going to say basically without people's names, without any names. Okay, I will not mention names. Um, that the rules don't apply. The song to me is dedicated to a certain president of the United States. Mm -hmm. I understand. I think yes. everybody watching understands exactly. What okay, good. About. I've lost half of the viewers now. They go. The, no, 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 no. I, because VOA is not political. You know, VOA. I is, love that. I yes. love that. You know, we're not a tool. We're not. You know, somebody's. Larry, can I tell you a small story about? Business? Please do. I'd love to hear. Okay. It. So one of my best co-writers is a Republican, and you know. Um, I realized with writing with him, uh, very religious guy, and you know, we write the best songs together. And he also wrote the love song I wrote for my husband called uh, I Chose the Moon. And so I realized through writing with him that he and his wife, they're good people. And even though our viewpoints are different, that there's many things we have in common. And I think that's something we have to realize in this country is that we have far more things in common than we have that separate us. Yeah, and we've I, never and been as divided as we are now, and that's it's painful to be a part of in my lifetime. I agree. But it's it's interesting that through this writing with this, this guy, mm -hmm. I, I lived it. So we just reconciled because we had a little fight mm -hmm. because I didn't want him to play on my album because he wouldn't get vaccinated. Oh. And, oh. and then he stopped talking to me. So now we've reconnected and it's lovely because he's fantastic. He's a great mm -hmm. writer. Mm -hmm. You can never talk politics at Thanksgiving meals. You just, just got to stay You're away from it. Never in the recording studio. Either. Don't do not in the recording studio because your, your backup guys are not going to be, no one's going to agree on anything. You got it. Oh, no, they're, they're all different. You know, some of them are uh, one party and some of them are the other party. So mm -hmm. we all meet in the musical party. Right. And have a party. And that's what it's all have about. Have a party. Yeah. Have a party. So are you, uh, you know, planning the new album in 2024 or are you yes. saving it for 2025? 25. Oh, 25. Yeah. This is coming yeah. One out album next. a year. One a year. My, okay. My financial advisor says, do you need to make another album this year? And I go, no, I can, I can, I don't have to. <laughs> Albums are harder to sell nowadays. Now that people can you know, buy one song or, you know, things you like know that. You know something? It's just the whole paradigm has changed and I'm keeping up with it. And I'm actually going to start teaching classes on how to sell your music in the new digital age because I've had to learn how to do it. So it's, it's different. Mm -hmm. It is less money, but it's getting better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the bigger names, Taylor Swift can, can pull all of her songs off of, you know, Spotify, if she chooses, you know, things like that. But yeah. um, in terms of, uh, you know, the business changes that you've, what do you like and dislike most? What are the changes that you like about the business and the changes you dislike most about the business? Okay, it's the same thing. Uh, the change I like is that I have more control of my music. The change I dislike is I have more control of my music, which means I've got to do it all, you know? Right, right. And so I try to farm out the grunt work but I know how to do the grunt work usually better than the grunt. So I take it over and I'm a control freak. So, you know, mm. but, but, but there's, so, it's so much more, it takes so much more time. Mm -hmm. But the great thing is, you know, I can do a, um, I can do an alternate version of a song and just put it on Spotify and Apple. You know, mm -hmm. I have that control. You know, I was, I've been signed to many labels and you, uh, you had to ask the guy or the woman and say, you know, can I, now I don't have to, mm -hmm. which is great. Yes. At the same time, then I have the responsibility of, of figuring out everything myself.
Yes. Well, that's the job of a composer and lyricist. You, you know, you got to make the music before anybody can sing it or, or perform it. So you yeah. have the toughest job in the business, I think. Uh, songwriters are underappreciated. Uh, Writers are underappreciated. Yes, yes. Yeah. As we know, with the big strikes that went on in Los Angeles not too long ago with the film industry. Yeah. We're talking with uh, Mark Winkler, who has been spending some time with us today. And it's a pleasure to catch up. With him again, since you were on, what? A hundred years ago, no, uh, 14 years ago. 14 years ago, you were on Border Crossings, and we're, yeah. we're glad to have you back. My hair was dark gray. My Yeah, but my hair also was gray. Yeah, but it was but darker. Much darker. Yeah, you look great, right, though. Oh, well, thank you. So do you. I mean, L.A. has been very good to you. LA, there's a fountain of youth in L.A. That's a great title. L.A. has been good to you. Yes, oh, write that down. See, look at all these ideas you got. One Please. one interview and you got all kinds of ideas. Oh yeah, Mark Winkler's our guest. The rules don't apply. Is the new album? We're on in a hundred countries and wow. millions of people are tuned in right now. Is there any message Mark Winkler would like to send out to the worldwide audience? If there's any club owners in Italy, France, Germany, send for me. I want to <laughs> play your country. Um, that's a good message, but I, you know. That's that's a good message. And are you on social media so people can I find am. you? I'm uh, markwinklermusic.com, Facebook, X, Twitter, uh, YouTube. Yes, everywhere. Hmm. Blanketed over the... You know, I, I the one thing I didn't say is I have an incredible group of musicians on this new record that are like Grammy winning, like John Beasley, who won the Grammy mm -hmm. almost every year for Arranger of the Year, arranged a lot of my songs, played on it. I have Bob Shepard, who plays with Steely Dan. I've got Grant Geisman, who's incredible, Grammy nominated. So mm -hmm. I, that's the great blessing of my life is working with these fantastic musicians. Mm -hmm. And you've covered a lot of music, too. I was reading where you've covered songs by Paul Simon and Randy Newman. And, uh, yeah. and you were almost in Steely Dan? I was. You want to hear the story? Sure. We got okay. just enough time. Okay. So I worked with a wonderful arranger named Jimmy Haskell. I was in high school. And um, through my aunt, uh, who was in a band with him, she got she knew I could sing. So I met Jimmy. He became my mentor. And he was working at ABC Paramount. And he called me one day and he said, there's this new group called Steely. They weren't called Steely Dan, they were called Steely. And he said, they're looking for a lead singer. Paramount just, uh, ABC Dunhill just signed them. And they don't like the lead singer, Donald Fagan. So I go to meet with them. They have, they've auditioned everybody in town, literally. So I meet him, I meet Walter, I meet Skunk Baxter. And they, we did all these Motown songs. They said, well, what do you like to sing? And I went, well, I know every Motown song. So we sang all these Motown, Motown songs. They were the greatest musicians. And uh, they gave me three songs. They said, learn them, come back. I did. Everybody, he said, who wants Mark in the band? Everybody raised their hand, except Donald Fagan. Donald Fagan, yeah, of course. <laughs> and, and he said to me, I have to think about this. But that's it. So that's yeah. my silly dance, almost. Wow, wow, wow. Well, I had Walter Becker on. I've I've had Donald Fagan on in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, over the years when I was living in Japan, I had Don, Donald Fagan was there and he came He's on great. the show. They're yep. both, they're both he, you know, Walter and I communicated for about three years afterwards. He was very interested in my career and really a nice guy to me. So mm -hmm. that meant a lot to me. Well, thank you, Mark Winkler, for being on the show and giving us your time right. so generously. I really appreciate it and giving us some great music to enjoy. The Rules Don't Apply is the name of the new album. Our guest today, Mark Winkler. My name is Larry London, and you are watching Border Crossings on VOA TV.